And you're going to see today uh, as Tyler goes over uh, just the outline today and what we're going to go over, you know, we, we really should be doing this more frequently. You know, we have a lot of things in, you know, in store for, uh, you know, improved communication, transparency, future webinars, consistent webinars, you know, uh, doing quarterly webinars, letting you know what's happening with the property, what's going on, how's your return uh, doing, what's the financials look like, and then giving you an opportunity to ask us questions as well. Today with Aspen, obviously, um, there's been a lot of investors coming. Um, one of the reasons we put it off is, you know, really until we got the financial or the, or the, the lending, uh, you know, from the lender or the new structure of the debt is we didn't want to hop on and not have answers, right? We wanted to get that answer, have term sheets, and then be able to come to, uh, to you and let you know what we've decided as a management. Obviously, the investor experience is the most important to realize that it may not have come uh, across that way uh, at some times. And we hope that, you know, by this webinar, uh, we're able to clarify some things, let you know what's going on. And we realize, listen, there's some uncertain times uh, out there. Obviously, the media is saying what's going on, interest rates going up. You know, maybe you didn't hear from us and that made you nervous. And so for that, we apologize. And, and this webinar should hopefully clarify by the end what's happening uh, with Aspen. What are the decisions that have been made? And really, you know, what can you look forward moving forward and, and how is your investment, uh, you know, how is your investment moving forward and what's that, what that's going to do? So I'm going to uh, I'm going to turn it over to Tyler. He's done an amazing outline of what's happened. He and I are going to kind of tag team in certain areas. He's going to kind of go over what happened, how did we get here, and then I will go over a little bit of, you know, what that debt piece looks like, what the new debt piece looks like, and then we'll kind of go from there. Sound good, Tyler? Sweet. Yep. Absolutely. Thanks, awesome. bro. Thanks everybody for being here. For sure, like Ryan said, I would figure the you know weather would be just the most efficient way to provide some of the solutions that we've been putting together. You know, as a management team, we've been uh, busy at work to uh, you know create solutions for the current problems that we've been facing. So, I want to go through a couple things here. There we go. So first, okay, at the most basic level, man, this is our job as operators, our three most important jobs as operators. Like number one is to protect your capital. Uh, number two is to grow that capital. And then number three is to magnify your investor experience by offering the most seamless process possible. And the reality is all three of those things, those initiatives have been challenged with this property as of late, as I'm sure you know. Uh, so due to the items that I'm going to bullet point for you, you know, that Ryan and I will go through with you, not only have we struggled to grow your capital, uh, but it's actually been at risk uh, and is at risk. And, uh, you know, having to tell you that is, you know, the opposite of a magnified investor experience. Uh, that's a tough pill for us to swallow. And I'm sure even more challenging, you know, on your end. And once again, I apologize for that. We apologize for that. You know, also our team has grown. We have grown uh, substantially and we've added some amazing people. But the reality is, man, some of the reporting hasn't been there. And that's because we haven't, Ryan and I have not weaponized them the way that we should have. It's definitely a learning experience on our end. And that, so that's why reporting has been inconsistent. And that is on us, nobody else. Uh, so that being said, listen, we are excited, honestly. Uh, to hold this webinar, to go through and explain some of the solutions that we put in place for y'all, to regain your trust and fulfill on those three initiatives. And I have to give a huge shout out to Ryan and all the other operators because uh, when I say that a lot of thought, time, effort has been put into this, uh, that's a dr dramatic understatement. Ryan has spent hours and hours and hours and hours um, going through that. So excited to walk you through some of that for sure. Uh, so, so some of the major items that we're going to discuss, okay? Number one, the current state of Aspen Apartments. Uh, what problems, you know, there have been and how did we get into that situation? Uh, what the solutions we put in place? And then, Matt, what the next steps will be uh, for each and every one of you. So quick synopsis of where we're at and where we've been. Okay, so Aspen Apartments, 224 units, 23.7 um, million dollar purchase price, 18% uh, annualized rate of return. That was the projected return when we bought it. And we, we raised 8.8 .8 million on this deal. Uh, the acquisition side of things like acquisition, these numbers, our NOI was 996,319. We had an expense ratio of 49% and the annual debt service was 
746,571. Current, okay, so this initial acquisition versus current reality, our current NOI is uh, 1,159,000. That's actually where it should have been by about year one on this deal. So even though it's increased, I mean, man, we were expecting to be there by about year one, which is, you know, obviously not ideal. Uh, the expense ratio has jumped quite a bit to 56% instead of 49%. And our annual debt service has increased a ton. I mean, by nearly an increase of, I think that's like nearly 88% to 1.4, a little over 1.4 million. All of those things obviously have an impact on on the numbers and everything that we're doing on uh, you know, on the property. So walking you through what happened and really how that happened, uh, as an operating team, there's been a few major key issues that we've been battling. I'll walk you through some of those. Number one was the debt piece, right? The debt piece that we decided to put uh, on the property of purchase. We chose a two-year bridge loan for this deal. I uh, mean, given the current lending environment that we're in, that obviously not, you know, not ideal. Uh, hindsight, man, a three-year option would have been far better, even longer than that, probably would have been even better than that as well. That would have put us in a better position to refinance, resell, and get everyone the returns that we initially projected. But because of the you know adjustable rate, like I said, that that debt service and that bridge loan has increased nearly eighty eight percent. That's not a small number. That's a massive amount. Uh, other you know, number two is the increased expenses. Debt service we just mentioned, right? Property taxes is another one. Property taxes have increased by about thirty eight percent. 38%. That's very unforeseen in Texas in general. Across all markets, that's very, uh, very abnormal. It's increased from 427,000 to um, 617,000. Once again, not a small number. Uh, so we did protest the taxes uh, for 2024. Ryan, remind me what we were going to, it was going to increase to a valuation and be taxed off a of valuation. Was it 28 million? 28 million is what they did in Texas. Yeah. And so in protesting, we got it down to 21 million. So that's a win. That's definitely a win. Uh, that would have made taxes jump even higher than that, uh, obviously. And then insurance rates. Insurance has almost doubled since we took this property over. It's jumped from 156,000 to 375,000. These are all, these are, these are huge hits, man. All of these are huge hits. Then number three, property management. This was also a big one. Um, to put it plainly, man, we just did not choose the right property manager out the gate. We chose the wrong property management company out the gates. We chose an AI-based property management company. Uh, they had awesome, like they 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 boasted awesome tech solutions. And if you remember, at the time of like when we bought this property, it was during COVID, and so AI. We felt like hiring a, a company that had some AI capabilities and provided leasing options without any contact was the right decision. But very quickly after takeover, we you know we realized that their software definitely didn't work as advertised, uh, and even worse, their systems were not up to par, uh, and that hindered operations. That hindered the operations that we needed to put the property in a healthy position. And collections reflected that. Everything reflected back, and I'll circle back to the debt piece because if you remember, we put in a two-year loan, and this has always been a refinance, you know, exit for us, for all of us. This is what we projected in the very beginning, but we put in a two-year term. In order for us to hit that, man, we had to be super aggressive out the gates to get the financials to where we needed them to be to be able to refinance into agency debt. But man, we picked a, a rough property management company, and then had to replace them which means we had to stabilize the asset instead of being aggressive. It lost us six months plus uh, in the market where, you know, being aggressive in that market, it was primed at that point to be aggressive. And instead, man, we were, you know, instead of being aggressive, we were managing poor occupancy. We were managing delinquency. Uh, we had to uh, implement, you know, collection strategies, focus on evictions, wait for the courts to even allow us to evict in the very beginning as well. And then all the minutia that goes with replacing a management company, there's a lot. Um, so all those items obviously had an impact on the bottom line. That's the bad news, okay? The good news is we're finally on an upward trend. And once again, hey, huge know. shout out. Yeah. Uh, really quick. So I, and I know we want to limit the question so we can make sure we get through this and respect everyone's time. But uh, Daniel asked, what contributed to the large property tax increase? So I think it's important here to, to state, you know, 
as as cap rates came down, interest rates uh, came down, money was readily available, right? 2019, 2020, 2021, right? 2021, we started to see a, de a decline. However, you know, when these properties were selling at, at, you know, an astronomical amount after we we purchased, right, it, it, it created the market where the comps in the area and the valuations increased dramatically. Some of them, you know, almost double. So what, what happened is Texas has actually seen this. And so uh, Governor Abbott has actually jumped in. If you've done any research there, uh, Governor Abbott is looking to control this to where he can do a cap of 5% on valuation in a, in a property so this doesn't happen again. But what happens is everyone, if you remember, went into Texas and started buying in Texas, Texas. Texas has always been one of a you know, really good market. And so because of what was happening in the market and the and the sales prices just went up dramatically, you know? And so that's what caused taxes. Actually, it was closer to what, 45, 46% that this went up. We protested and the protest went down to 38%. So it was actually it was supposed to be higher than this. But that, yeah, Daniel, that, that's why property taxes increase so much. Love it. No, dude, chime in anytime. I, don't, I, I can't find the chat on mine. As soon as I started in, I lost it, and I don't want to switch up. So, if, dude, any questions that come up, bro, chime in anytime. Um, so, man, the good news, once again, we're just we're on an upward trend, which is great. Uh, we've been able to increase the NOI by about 85% over the past 12 months. And I want to explain a little bit, and maybe Ryan, you can even explain this too, but the reasons that our NOI went down, we had a lot of evictions uh, in the very beginning. Once again, operations, collections, everything with that property management company, we had a lot of evictions, and so our NOI dropped. And so a lot of that NOI increase, and once again, Ryan, jump in anytime you want to, but yeah, a lot of that NOI increase has been not even necessarily by rent gains. It's been by finally getting those units that we, you know, had evictions on out and new tenants back in paying. Do you have any other comments on that, Ryan? Uh, no, I mean, that pretty much sums it up. You know, uh, I, I mean, obviously in NOI, when you have a setback of debt service, a lot of you, uh, we had questions from you of why so much in write-offs, right? Why, you know, uh, why so much in bad debt? Well, anytime you have bad people and you can't evict, right? NOI is going to take a huge dip. I mean, for us, it was a couple hundred thousand dollars in dip to, to, you know, to get back in that takes some time, right? And so really the last four or five months, you've seen dramatic changes in the financials. Really, I was telling Tyler, you know, if we had another year, like he said at the beginning, if it was a three-year loan, mm -hmm. we would be right on track with where we need to be. You know, unfortunately, because we couldn't evict, and then when we finally were able to evict, you saw a lot of that bad debt, uh, you know, and a lot of those write-offs. Um. So I saw Sylvia asked, why did the debt payments go up? And yeah, it was an adjustable rate with the bridge loan. Uh, and then Drew asked if you can, because of the webinar format that we have, it's, we, I think the questions just come in in a QA and a setting, right, Ryan? He said he can't yeah. see the other questions. Yeah, so only yeah. we can see them. But so I promise you, any, any questions that, yeah, any questions that come in, we'll address. Okay, so solutions. Okay, what are the solutions? There's three major things I'm going to walk you through. Okay, number one is we need to move to a fixed rate long-term debt piece. That's going to help us maintain stability over the next five to seven years uh, and stabilize the asset and then maybe drive the values back up. So with the current loan, the current loan is matured. We had some, we had two six-month extensions that we've, um, we have uh, already been util utilizing. So we ultimately had three options. Man, as we were looking through this, and this is what taken a, a lot of time to walk through and figure out. And once again, a huge shout out to Ryan because he's done an amazing job with this. Uh, we had a couple options, but we could have walked away from the deal. And I know that that sounds dramatic, but uh, if you look at the news or you see anything in the current state of the market, there are operators who have walked away. Uh, it's not an option for us. First off, Ryan, how much do we have in this deal invested into this deal? Uh, close to a million dollars of our own so uh, i'll tell you that you know investing with operators who invest in the same deals you're investing in is is huge we do that on every deal we invest in uh we could have sold the asset if we would have sold the asset we would have only been able to sell in the market for about 21 22 million which means investors all of us would have lost what 70 80 percent of capital uh obviously not an option either we had to figure out some way to refinance, restructure, and 
Ryan, I'll walk you through. Uh, uh, so I'll, I'll turn it over to you, and you can walk them through how we're going to do that. Not necessarily a, a true refinance, but yeah, what our plan is on this. Yeah. So what we decided to do instead of doing a refinance is doing a, a complete restructure. New debt is what we're bringing in. And so in that new debt, it would allow us to, uh, the options we had was an 18 month extension. If we did the 18 month extension, we would essentially be in the same place we are because we would have to put the property up uh, you know, for sale about the 14 month mark. That doesn't allow the NOI to get to where we really needed to get. Really, we want the interest rates to stay lower. We know that there's still gonna be some adjustment in interest rates. So we wanna get in long-term debt. Um, in that play, really, we want a five to seven year uh, uh, loan on that. So what we did is we went and got uh, a seven year loan. It's kind of a hybrid uh, with two years interest only. Um, in that interest only, it's right around, I, I think it's 5.4% interest rate is what we're getting. Um, and so the new debt, the existing debt is 18.6 million. The new debt is, is 10.3 million. We're going to bring some pref equity behind it. It's right around $2.7 million dollars. Uh, as we have uh, a term sheet out with them right now. Um, and so that is the the new debt piece that we're bringing in. Um, what the the great thing about it is we had a um, our interest rate was right around five and a half percent on this. It was where it maxed out. You have SOFR plus what was it 350, I think is what it was. And so um, we were right at about five and a half percent before our rate cap kicked in. So we had a rate cap on this property. Um, on the new debt piece, it'll be right around the same interest rate, but at a lower amount. So the debt service will be a lot lower. So the property will actually start to cash flow because our debt service won't be as high. So that's that's one of the, the the biggest benefits. The other thing too is, you know, this play really, you know, as Tyler and I were talking about, was a long term play anyway. It was a two to three, or it was a two year with two uh, six month extensions on the original debt piece. Well, the plan was always to go in and refinance it, going to to long term debt. And so what we're doing is it's a uh, it's still going to be about a, a five year hold, um, and we'll go over those in some of these numbers here shortly of what that looks like if we hold it for five years uh, or seven years of what those returns should be. Uh, but essentially, um, you know, that's where we're at. Sorry, I was looking at someone posted a question, Tyler. But um, uh, why was it short adjust? Someone asked, you know, why did we do a two year bridge at the time? Really, you know, that's what was available on it. We really felt that, that we could go in and stabilize the asset. Um, with the two six-month extensions, we felt that you know that would take us to three years. Unfortunately, because the NOI went backwards instead of forwards, we had to hit uh, hit it about 1.4 million in NOI. And uh, like you said, we're right about almost 1.2 million right now, so we're a little bit short. And so they didn't allow us to do the two uh, the two six-month extensions. So we were we were forced to go into uh, a new debt piece and a restructure. Yeah, we couldn't we couldn't refinance. And this this is where I say like the creativity that has been done. So we're essentially, man, we are rebuying it. We're rebuying it. We're raising when it says that, you know, we're raising 10.3, we're we're bringing in 10.3 million dollars to rebuy at a new debt to help preserve everyone's capital and then man grow and get you guys the returns that that we projected. Uh Sarah said on here five to seven years from today or overall from the beginning it's five to seven years from today correct right that is correct yeah and i'll tell you why we say five to seven as we go through this and why you know we we play that number game uh it gives us some room but i'll walk you through the you know some more of those details here in just a second so number one we had to figure out a way to get into some more fixed long-term debt and once again ryan's done an amazing job of figuring out ways to do that okay number two is MFCP is going to take over as head of asset management. Uh, we have not been the head of asset management. And it's one of the ways, the only way that we could even get a new loan with a new lender at the terms we did is if we took over uh, as head of asset management. We have an amazing team there, by the way. Lindsay is, the, is our VP of asset management, the director of uh, asset management director. She is about 20 plus years of experience. She's the former VP of a property management company. And she took over about five months ago, by the way. And if you look at the numbers, the increase from the past five months, uh, it's a difference. There's definitely a difference. So which is why the numbers have increased like they have is because Lindsay's done an amazing job. We're also going to be bringing in a new property management company. Uh, that property management company is AMC. Uh, and Ryan, I'll let you talk about AMC because I know that you've had lots of conversations about them. You were integral in in choosing them for this property as well. 
you want to cover a little bit about AMC? Yeah. Why you like them? AMC is amazing. They own, uh, or they manage a little over 127,000 units. One of the biggest things is they already uh, oversee some of our uh, existing properties. So um, they oversee uh, our uh, four of our pro or three of our properties in Houston, uh, and they're doing a great job at takeover on that. Um, they have two pro one property in Orlando they oversee for us, and then they have another property we closed in Georgia. Uh, and on those deals, uh, in just a short amount of time that we have, um, we've already hit like our one year numbers in six months. Their portfolio in general, uh, historically, they do uh, last year, they did 2.6% over what their pro forma numbers are. So this company actually executes. Currently right now, when we have a management company, um, you know, we pay the percentage based on uh, to the existing management company based on gross receipts or gross cash that com comes in. You know, the thing is, is we want them to be held accountable on the effective gross income. The amazing thing with, with AMC is they're in line with who what our vision is. For example, if there's bad debt or write-offs, they don't get paid out, right? They get paid out on the effective gross income uh, on that part of it, right? And so um, that's important to us. We don't want them to put tenants in there that aren't paying. And so AMC is in line with this, what our vision and what our goals are. And that's one of the reasons why they're 2.6% over what our performance that we give them uh, is. That's why I like them so much. Yeah, me too. Did you want to talk about, I saw that Drew... Talk about where's the new, the new debt's coming from a senior, just a regular senior, you know, senior debt. But you're talking about the re-raise, probably. Where's that coming from? And he said, I'm assuming it's not a capital call from current investors. Do you want to talk about why we decided to, you know, rebuy, bring in, and we're, how we're raising new money, and why we decided to do that instead of a true capital call? Yeah. So, um, you know, like like Tyler said, it, it wasn't wasn't ideal in all the, the thought process. And, and in fact, in my communication with Tyler was put investor experience first, right? It's always investor experience. And the easy thing, trust me, the easy thing would have been to walk away. That would have been the easiest thing. And, and like Tyler said, you know, operators are doing it left and right right now. Uh, obviously we have quite a bit of money into this deal. You all have a lot of uh, money into these deals and really it's a relationship business. Um, you know, and it's really trying to fulfill on, on what we told you guys we wanted to do. And so in the decisions that went into that, um, it was, they gave us the option to extend for the 18 months. That really wasn't the solution. We literally would have been into the same spot. Plus we had to pay down uh, the, the existing debt by about $6 million, close to 7 million. That still wouldn't have given us the, cap, uh, the capital expenditure, the money to go in, right? To be able to get done what we needed to get done. So the 18 month was not a solution. Um, the only way to do it is to get into a new debt piece or to refinance. Well, the refinance option doesn't allow us to, to get uh, creative or structure a lower property tax piece. We want to be able to control those expenses and keep those taxes down. Our hopes is that you know, by the purchase price, that will allow us um, you know, in selling it back to ourselves, having us just oversee it, that uh, uh, it, it allows us to hopefully get a lower property tax rate, right? The value, valuation of it, we can keep down at what the purchase price is. So we decided to restructure with new debt piece uh, altogether and treat this as a sale. I know that one of the questions was, uh, Drew asked it, the question as well, is this a, a capital call? Well, you know, here's the thing. In a capital call, the fact that you saw the number in there was 10.3 million, we have to actually buy down to get into a new debt piece, right? So we have to buy down from 18.3 million, or sorry, 18.6 million to the $10.3 million. So we have to buy down the debt to get it into long term, uh, to get it into long term debt, uh, and so we have to raise ten point three million. The reason why this is not a capital call is is this: we we decided as a management company that coming to our investors at raising ten million dollars was not the viable option and wouldn't happen, right? That just wouldn't happen. So we had two choices: we could sell the property, like Tyler said, and everyone would lose close to eighty percent uh, of their capital, or we put it into a new debt piece and bring new debt in. So in bringing new debt in, that 10.3 is this, and I think we'll talk about it, it's actually more equity into the deal. By bringing more equity into the deal, it dilutes the shares, right? And that's, just, unfortunately, it just dilutes the shares, right? So that just means you have a, 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 you'll have a lower ownership percentage because we have to bring more equity in. And our hopes is this, right? And I can understand what some of you are thinking. Our hopes in putting into a, a, a new debt piece is that it will allow us to get the net operating income to where we, where we need it to be. 
The reality is, is to sell a multifamily property, it's based on two things, really. Your net operating income and forced appreciation and driving that up. It's also based on what the cap rates are in the market. Some of the people put in here, you know, uh, someone put in about inflation. They put uh, interest rates going up. And you're right. When inf uh, inflation goes up, interest rates go up, cap rates go up, right? Our hope is this, is putting into a long-term debt that we will be able to get the NOI to where it needs to be. And you'll see in the upcoming slides, I'm not sure, Ty, if you want me to stop or keep going. Um, and you'll see that the net operating income needs to get to about $1.8 million for us to, to realize where we want to get to, right? That's what we want to do. We want to get that to a place, right, to drive up that NOI. Um, but so, so the purpose of the call, the purpose of the call is to tell you that we're restructuring, bringing in more capital into the thing, into the equity and giving you an opportunity either to put it in uh, or we have solutions for that as well as bringing money into the uh, into the new deal. So Ty, I'll let you go over that and then I can touch base a little bit as well on this. Yeah, so that Unless number three to... solution, no, no, it's good, yeah, no, no stress. That, that number three solution is exactly what Ryan just talked about, which is driving the NOI up. And by driving the NOI up, it drives that exit uh, value up as well. So the projected, once again, he said it's based on the NOI uh, as well as uh, cap rates. It's also based on availability of debt, man. How much how much debt people can afford to have, and with the interest rates, you know, rising the way they have, that also affects everything. So the current NOI once again is a little over one point one million dollars. Uh, five year NOI we project to be at one point eight million, and that is a very conservative number. That's roughly a fifty percent uh, increase per month in rent, which is very it's well below the DFW market rent growth. But by doing that, by driving the NOI up over the span of five years, that would take the exit price to roughly $37 million. And that would result, just to help you understand the returns here, if we held for five years and it took us five years to get that NOI to the 1.8, uh, that would be roughly a $37 million exit, which would result in about 10% annualized rate of return. So below what we projected, unfortunately, uh, below. If we hold for seven years, if we hold for seven years, that should be close to a $41 million exit, which would get us uh, very close to, if not exceeding the initial return projections that we talked about annually. Yes, it's a longer hold, but as an annual return, that's what we projected. That's why we say five to seven years. Uh, so what we can play that when we get to that point and, you know, maybe interest rates go down, maybe, you know, cap rates decrease, maybe things change or maybe they don't, you know, maybe they don't. These projections are based on if they don't. Once again, we want to make sure that we put the best solution in that helps us in the short term, but man also protects, protects capital and helps us grow that capital in the, in the long run. Uh, so the question, the answer to the question of, you know, is that coming from y'all? That's up to you uh, on if you would like to invest in, you know, additional shares or not. Uh, we will be investing in additional shares. We'll talk about what that looks like as well. Uh, but it's a, honestly, it puts you in first position and it's a good opportunity for you. Uh, so we can explain some of those as well. Anything else you want to cover on this side, Ryan? No, I think it's important. Uh, quite a few people are asking, you know, really this is a, a seven and a half to nine and a half year hold now. Um, in reality, we could look at that way as well. Anytime that we get in any debt or any deal or investment, you know, just because the loan is at five to seven years or seven years in this case, doesn't mean that we're going to hold for seven years. In the event that, you know, we get to the 1.8 million in three years, we're going to look at the market and what the market is doing. Our cap rates down and can we sell it at that cap rate? If the cap rate is not where it needs to be and returns won't be there, then it makes no sense to sell. And so if it's in the fourth year or fifth year, then that's what we will do. Um, you know, the, the key indicator to most multifamily deals is your NOI, your net operating income and where you can get that. Mind you, you know, this the, the NOI, as Tyler said, is, you know, really it's organic growth of $50 a year. We all know the DFW area is growing at a much higher rate than that. We actually have 74 units that are about $200 below market rent still that we can get aggressive to. If you've watched any of Tyler's webinars, he talks about force appreciation. We still have the ability to grow a lot of these interior units and increasing NOI at a lot quicker pace. We're not saying that what we're doing is, is trying to set proper expectations from here on out of what your investment should do for you 
And, and worst case scenario, if it took five to seven years to get to the 1.8 million, that's based on organic growth. That doesn't, that's not based on forced appreciation. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, I can ask you a question, you know, and, and you can type it in the chat if you want to. Like if you had three options, you could sell now, lose your money, sell, hold for a little bit and sell within a couple of years and just recoup capital or hold a little bit longer and recoup capital and make good returns, what would you choose? If you were in that position, what would you choose? Sell now, lose, short-term hold to recoup, longer hold, yeah, or option three, one, two, or three, what would you choose? Yeah, option three, same, same thing that we had to decide as we came into this of what was the best way to approach it. Now, Matt, we would love, dude, if it goes in year three, once again, and we can, we can have our cake and eat it too, man, we would love that. But, you know, our job right now is to put solutions together to protect our capital collectively, man. Once again, we have a good chunk of money into this deal as well. A good chunk of money into this deal as well. We want to make sure we put the best solutions possible. So some next steps, okay? And somebody said, uh, so you're asking for for money we're not asking for money we're telling you that you have the opportunity to invest if you would like to invest and you should and i'll explain why i believe that you should if you have the capital you should but a true capital call would almost require you to do that which is why we didn't do it that way we wanted to give you the best option that if you're in a position where you could where you can awesome and if you're not hey amen we we have other solutions as well hey, but we can talk about next steps and what that looks like yeah you know, someone put in here are the GPs uh, taking a haircut on this deal. And I can understand the frustration. <laughs> Listen, I, I can understand the sentiment of where that comes from. I don't from. have any room for haircuts, bro. Yeah. And Steve, you want to have a private conversation with me? You're more than welcome to have that conversation with me. Um, you know, I, I, I will take a, any private calls that any of you guys want to take one-on-one. -on -one. The reality is this. The GPs haven't taken any fees since acquiring the property. The, the, or the asset management fees, we are not taking right now. Right. The GP side of it in going into the new debt structure, GPs aren't taking any money from it as a restructure. So when we talk about the haircut, right, it comes down to investor experience. Right. The reality is, if we can't fulfill on what we said, we shouldn't get any money. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that we truly believe as a team is that LPs, limited partners come first and you always come first. And it's about the relationship. You know, it's an unfortunate situation. Like Tyler said, a lot of the stuff couldn't have been projected. No one, no one projected COVID. No one projected interest rates doing what they did. Right. And so the solution, right, is trying to figure out how can we restructure to not take a loss, but to get, a, you know, some sort of a return to investors as well. Meanwhile, trying to bring in new debt to bring it down, we have to bring in new debt. And like Tyler started to say is we have that money raised already. We don't need to bring in other money, but giving you an opportunity. I know Tyler's you're going to go over that right now. But the reality is GPs will not take any returns when this property sells in the future. Yeah, we'll still be working for seven years to get everybody their returns. But man, that's how it should be. And if anybody, any of y'all who have invested, uh, we had a, a deal that was uh, we bought right before COVID happened, Village East. And we still got our investors great returns on that. But the way we got them those great returns is we didn't take anything as GPs. Uh, and it's the same thing here. So, man, it's our job. Once again, man, we're a limited partner along with you. We have money right alongside you guys. And so that's number one for sure. Our, our fund has a lot of money in this as well. So, okay, so next steps, okay? So new PPMs will be sent out. Those are almost done, almost finalized. Uh, and as, so as soon as those will be done, they'll be sent over and you'll execute the new PPM. Uh, so just sign and send. Number two is those of you who would like to place additional capital, place additional capital. Uh, the new position, so any the capital that is, is raised, that new position will go in the first position. Uh, and it is 16% annualized rate of return is what we're projecting. Um, yeah, they'll be sent out via DocuSign from uh, MFCP, the new docs that you saw that question. Correct, Ryan? Uh, well, I'm sorry, Ty, what was that? I was trying to sorry. answer some the, questions in here. The uh, investor docs, the PPM docs will be sent from the DocuSign. investor portal via DocuSign. Yeah. Correct. Yep. 
to paint this picture though, with getting, you know, the first 16%, this is why I'm, this is why we are investing money into this and why I believe that any of you who have the ability should. Uh, right now for us to get 16% annualized rate of return on new capital that we're bringing in, we'd have to sell the property at 24.75 million. That's what we need. To, if, we, if we sell it for, with the new structure, we buy, bring in the new capital. If we sold at 24.75 million, the new capital that is brought in would, if we sold at 24.75 million, that would get their 16% annualized rate of return. That is a no brainer because the property is already valued at 22, 23 ish or so right now. It's a no brainer. Uh, and once again, first in line there. Uh, and then number three is schedule a call with uh, our IR specialist, whether that's with uh, Sarah, with Sugo Capital, or with MFCP. You know, if you have questions, any questions regarding any of this, you can certainly call. Um, and then we're, we are planning to close by October 1st on this deal. Planning to close by October 1st on this deal. So, new, do we have a, an estimate on when those docs will be sent, Ryan? Uh, they should be, uh, they'll be done Tuesday of next week. Uh, and then we, we will have them out by the end of next week, those new docs. Dan, I want to I wanna preface this too. And by me preface this, I'm going to let Ryan preface this. Uh, we send them the docs they have by what time to sign the docs? Two weeks. Two weeks to sign the docs. Um, and that is regardless if they're investing new capital or not, correct? Correct. It has to be okay. signed, correct. And then if they don't sign within the two weeks and they, you know, drop the ball or not, they don't do it, what happens? Uh, in that event, it means uh, that, I mean, unfortunately, if you don't want to sign, it means that you take a loss in your uh, in your investment. So make sure that you stay on top and be looking for Now we will be on top of you as well. Obviously we don't want that to happen to anybody. That's why we're going this route, but we need to execute. We have a, a small time frame. I bring that up because we have a small time frame to be able to execute. So we'll send the docs sometime next week and just make sure that we get them signed uh, and delivered back over. Uh, anything else you want to cover on that end, Ryan? No, just, yeah. Uh, and getting it done, uh, obviously we could give, you know, uh, could give it a, a couple options. You know, I know that I went, last one sounds harsh, but in talking to our SEC attorneys, talking to our real estate attorneys uh, about what needed to be done, uh, really it's just a dilution of share um, or you walk away from the investment altogether. And we figured most of our investors uh, in this don't want, it doesn't make any sense to walk away from it. Uh, but essentially those are the options. You know, that's really it. Yep. Once again, y'all, this, uh, this is the first time we've ever had to do anything like this. Um, certainly not ideal. And I uh, hate that, you know, you are the ones who are involved in that process. But I'll promise you this, man. We're very dedicated, very, very dedicated to the process. Uh, like Ryan said, everything on the GP side, um, and we're, we roll all that over to the LP side, to y'all. And we're not in this for the short term. We're in this for the long run. And right now, man, I'm, I'm not a fan of this call. I'm, there's, I'm feeling, there's nobody who's a fan of this call. Nobody likes to have a call like this. But the goal is by the time we're done with this and everything is, is uh, completed on this deal, that you'll be a fan of who we are as operators and the solutions that we put in place. And it's actually the story that you'll tell on what we did when things didn't just go as planned, but what we did when things didn't go as planned and how we stepped up and how we found solutions. That's the story we want you to tell. Uh, and man, we are dedicated to making sure that that story exists. And we appreciate every single one of you for your patience and for your partnership and for everything. Uh, you guys have been very patient on the K-1 situation. You've been very patient with you do everything. And we appreciate y'all. Um, that's all on our shoulders, man. And we are once again, Ryan and I shoulder that heavily, and I got to give a huge shout out to Ryan because he has worked tirelessly, man, to put all this into place and has done an amazing job at it. Uh, I'm proud to be his partner, proud to have Sarah on here as the partner as well, and everything that she's done to help with that as well. So thank y'all. Uh, anything else, Ryan, before we wrap it up? Uh, yeah, listen, I, I will open myself up, uh, you know, to answer questions should you have any questions. Um you know, um, get those PPMs, uh, you know, document signs should be out to you by the end of next week. Um, you know, someone asked a question is, 
if you want to change your ownership, uh, you want to put it into a different name, um, you want to put it into your kids' name, whatever the case may be, you want to put it into a trust. Uh, as you get those new documents, make sure that uh, that you do it during that time. Um, it's just like any other time. If you were to change it, put it in an LLC, trust, anything like that, you can do so at that time. Here, uh, Tyler, if, if you will, uh, you know, I will say this, right? And 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 I'm sure we're we're coming to you know wrapping up. I was just trying to read some questions here. Um, is the reality is this: when you look at a deal, what we want to do is give you transparency in the future, right? It's based on NOI, and as you see your quarterly uh, reports and financial reports that are sent to you quarterly, you'll see uh, you'll see where the NOI is at, and you'll see where it's training to. Um, that's the number that you need to focus on. Um, and as that grows, you'll be able to see based on a cap rate in a specific market and the DFW specifically, what we potentially be able to sell that deal for. And so as we send out those reports and you have questions, you know, make sure that we refer it to uh, to really NOI and what's happening with NOI. But just know that as the AMC comes on, they see uh, they're aligned with us, right? They're aligned in making sure that the bad debt goes down, it's eliminated, that, they're, uh, you know, that we don't write off uh, what we were writing off, that we're putting the right tenants in to build the NOI uh, and that we all have the same goal. That's really what uh, why we're switching and why we want to do it. So um, really that's, uh, uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's- Do you see Sarah's, yeah. do you see Sarah's question? Cause that's a great point that we forgot to cover the depreciation yeah. side of things. Yeah. yeah, so depreciation will go, uh, it's based on, uh, on the future when we do it and the different classes, the new equity piece. Um, someone said if they invest too, but, um, if you if you do choose to invest uh, equity, it will be only those individuals who uh, who invest new capital that will get depreciation again. That'll be in its own tier, its own class. Uh, the existing investors going into the new debt or into the new piece um, will not get depreciation again. Um, in selling a property, it will trigger a recapture. So if you did invest the cost segregation study, we are using the same one. Um, they will get depreciation that will flow down uh, according to the class that gets it. So, you know, great question. Yep. That's more of a CPA question, though. Make sure you get your CPA on that. Uh, the sale will do that. I finally found my chat, but did we did we cover all the questions in the chat? Or Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. We, we went over uh, the ones that asked questions for sure. Um, so that uh, Sarah said, will it trigger a, a recapture from, yeah, the the – the depreciation or the depreciation a lot of you got from two years ago. If you haven't used that, you can use that to, to offset it. Once again, make sure you get with your CPA. Um, they can go over that uh, for you as well. I think most of you guys that got a Aspen K1 this year, I think there was losses on that as well. So you'll be able to use those losses towards this. Uh, can I cover one of the, I, I did see one I just saw that I don't, I don't think we covered. But it was what assures us once the new investors achieve a return on the new investment that the property isn't sold and the rest of us lose. Uh, I mean, there's no assurance on any of that. But remember, like, you're not, your money has already been invested into the deal. It's already there. Whether we, when, whether you continue forward or not, it's, it's, it's there. It's a new purchase in, in what we're doing. But understand as well, we have a good chunk of money in, in the same position that you are. Uh, we wouldn't do that. That's why we say a longer hold. Uh, that's what. That's why. That's why we didn't do a refinance. A refinance would have put us in that position, and we're not. We're not a fan of that position. So we would much rather, once again, option number three, hold longer to make sure that we uh, not only regain the capital, but man, that we actually get returns on the capital that we've all invested uh, into the deal. So that's the whole reason. Uh, Mark who asked the question. That's the whole reason we structured this deal the way that we have is to eliminate that. That's why. Okay. We got everything right? I think so, yeah. Okay. Y'all, once again, thank you so much. Once again, any questions that you have, do we need to um, send out a link or anything? We'll be sending out a link for those who want to uh, reserve a new spot in the new capital. How do you want to handle that? Yes. Uh, we, we just want to send that later. Yeah, we can send that out later. I thought I had it here um, and don't have it. So we can definitely send that out. Uh, if you're interested, uh, we'll send you um, whatever documents you have. Once again, you can reach out to either Sugal Capital or MF Capital Partners on your investment. Uh, and we'll, yeah, we'll be sending that here uh, by end of day. Sweet. 
Thanks, y'all. Appreciate you. And once again, any questions, please, please, please feel free to reach out. We appreciate y'all. Thank you.